हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज डॉक्टर प्रिया महाजन एंड आई एम फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉमर्स उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी दिस इज एन इंट्रोडक्टरी सेशन ऑन फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट एंड इन दिस सेशन वी विल हैव सम बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट इन दिस सेशन वी विल कवर द मीनिंग ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट एवोल्यूशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट एंड scope of financial management so first of all what is financial management financial management is that managerial activity which is concerned with planning and controlling of the firm's financial resources in other words it is concerned with the acquiring financing and managing assets to accomplish the overall goal of the business enterprises so financial management is what financial management is the management of the financial activities of the business enterprises and all these activities they are managed by the higher authority of the business enterprises to maximize the shareholders wealth in today's world where positive cash flow is more important than book profit financial management can also be defined as planning for the future of a business enterprise to ensure a positive cash flow so financial management basically focus on the positive cash flows in the uh, enterprise some experts also refers to financial management as the science of manage, money management so financial management is also known as as the uh, science of money management next uh, there are some definitions so first one is by raymond chambers financial management comprises the forecasting planning organizing directing coordinating and controlling of all activities relating to acquisition and application of the financial resources of an undertaking in keeping with its financial objectives another very elaborate definition by uh, philip uh, philipatus is financial management is concerned with the managerial decision that result in the acquisition and financing of short term and long term credits for the firm next are the aspects of financial management the term aspects of financial management refers to the different components involved in the process of managing an enterprise's financial resources so here are two aspects or two components of financial management these are the procurement of funds and second one is utilization of funds so first of all we will discuss about the procurement of funds so since funds can be obtained from different sources or you can say different alternatives are available with the enterprises therefore their procurement is always considered as a complex problem by business concern some of the sources for funds for a business enterprises are here shown in the chart you can see on your screens so here are shares and debentures which enterprises generally issue to the public to uh, raise the funds to obtain the funds then there are higher purchase and leasing services then angel financing where some uh, uh, enterprises they uh, invest in the uh, company uh, help them financially then venture capital is there then commercial banks commercial banks provide short term medium term long term loans to the to these business enterprises on the funds are there so these are the different sources for the procurement or to obtain the funds funds procured from different sources have different characteristics in term of risk cost and control so these are the three characteristics risk cost and controls which uh, enterprises generally uh, consider when they uh, go for the uh, raising funds then the cost of funds should be at minimum level for that a proper balancing of risk and control factor must be carried out so let us discuss uh, some of these sources uh, so first one is the equity shares the fund raised by issue of equity shares are the best from the risk point of view for the firm since there is no question of repayment of equity capital except when the firm is under liquidation so equity shares they are considered as the less riskier source of funds then from the cost point of view however equity capital is usually the most expensive source of funds this is because the dividend expectations 
of shareholders are normally higher than the prevalent interest rate and also because dividends are an appropriation of profit not allowed as an expense under the income tax act so uh, equity shares from the cost point of view they consider uh, expensive uh, we have discussed two reason for that first one is that dividend expectations of shareholders are higher because shareholders they invest their money in the company and they expect a higher return uh, from the company and second the companies they cannot deduct the amount they paid as dividend from their taxable income when calculating their corporate income tax liability so these two reasons they make the equity shares expensive then also the issue of new shares to public may dilute the control of the existing shareholders so when company they issue new equity shares to the general public then uh, the new uh, owners come and they dilute the control of the existing shareholders so here we have talked about the three characteristics risk cost and control from the risk point of view equity shares they are considered less risky from the cost point of view equity shares are considered uh, uh, costlier and uh, uh, when new shares come in the market th they dilute the control of the existing shareholders next is the debentures so debentures as a source of funds are comparatively cheaper than the shares because of the tax advantage the interest the company pays on the debenture is free of tax unlike a dividend payment which is made from the taxed profits so from cost point of view debentures are cheap to the business enterprises companies pay interest on debentures annually or semi annually or quarterly or they can pay monthly that depends on the debenture agreement but when times are hard they still have to pay the interest it means that the interest payment has to be made whether or not the company make profits so the debentures involve a high degree of risk since they have to be repaid as per the terms of agreement so from the uh, cost point of view debentures are considered cheaper but from the risk point of view debenture they are considered as the riskier source of funds and there is no question of control dilution as the debenture holders are the creditors of the company and they do not affect the ownership of the shareholders next is the funding from banks so commercial banks play an important role in funding of the business enterprises so commercial banks they provide loan to the business enterprises apart from supporting businesses in their routine activities like deposits payment etc they play an important role in meeting the long term and short term needs of a business enterprise this so here is the graph which depicts the different lending services provided by the banks there are two kind of services fund based and non fund based fund based services include the cash credit overdraft facility provided by the banks then term loans are there working capital bill purchase and discounted and non fund uh, based services are guarantee which the banks uh, generally uh, uh, give on behalf of their clients and then letter of credits which banks issue to the another banks so these are the different services lending services which are provided by the banks then international funding so funding is not limited to domestic market only companies they can raise funds now from international market also with liberalization and globalization a business enterprise has options to raise capital from international market also foreign direct investment and foreign institutional investors are two major routes for raising funds from foreign sources besides adrs and gdrs obviously the mechanism of procurement of funds has to be modified in the light of the requirement of foreign investors so here we have discussed about the procurement of funds now this uh, another aspect is the utilization of funds effective utilization of funds so companies enterprises how they effectively utilize their funds the raising of fund is important but their effective utilization is more important the funds should be used in such a way that maximum benefit is derived from them the returns from their use should be more than their cost it should be ensured 
that funds do not remain idle at any point of time so students this is very important for the enterprises that they must be they should be ensured that their funds do not remain idle at any time because it will cost them more the funds committed to various operations should be effectively utilized so now some of the aspects of fund utilization so first one is the utilization for fixed assets the funds are to be invested in the manner so that the company can produce at its optimum level without endangering its financial solvency for this the finance manager would be required to possess to possess sound knowledge of techniques of capital budgeting as far as the capital budgeting is concerned it is the planning process used to determine whether a firm's long term investment such as new machinery replacement machinery new plants new product and research development project would provide the desired return or profit so so capital budgeting is basically the evaluation of the potential major projects or investments then next is the utilization for working capital working capital means that funds which are used to meet day to day expenses of the business like pay wages to workers rent payment and any other operational expenses the finance manager must keep in view the need for adequate working capital and ensure that while the firms enjoy an optimum level of working capital they do not keep too much funds blocked in inventories book debts cash etc that will not be good for the company so till now we have discussed the components or aspects of financial management and you learned that there are basically two components two important components of financial management and that is uh, procurement of funds and effective utilization of funds now next we will discuss the evolution of financial management Financial management evolved gradually over the past 15 years. It was a branch of economics till 1890, and as a separate discipline, or you can say a separate subject, it is of recent origin. The evolution of financial management is divided into three phases. The three phases of evolution are traditional phase, the transitional phase, and the modern phase. so first one is the traditional phase during this phase financial management was considered necessary only during occasional events such as takeovers mergers expansions liquidation etc also when taking financial decision in the organization the need of outsiders like investment bankers people who lend money to the business and such other people Uh, to the business was kept in mind so the scope of financial management was limited in the traditional phase uh, then there came the transitional phase during this phase the day to day problems that financial manager faced were given importance the general problems related to fund analysis fund planning and control were given more attention in this phase then there comes the modern phase modern phase is still going on the scope of financial management has greatly increased now it is important to carry out financial analysis for a company this analysis helps in decision making during this phase many theories have been developed regarding efficient markets capital budgeting capital structure option pricing valuation models and also in several other important fields in financial management and also new theories are coming uh, also coming nowadays so these are the different phases of the evolution of financial management next we will discuss the importance of financial management finance is the life blood and nerve center of a business just as circulation of blood is essential in the human body for maintaining life finance is very essential for smooth running of the business it has been rightly termed as universal lubricant which keeps the enterprise dynamic no business whether big medium or small can be started without an adequate amount of finance right from the very beginning that is conceiving an idea to business finance is needed to promote or establish the business 
acquire fixed assets, make investigations such as market survey, etc., to develop product, keep men and machine at work, encourage management to make progress and create values. So finance is required at the each and every activity of the business concern. Even an existing concern or existing enterprise may require further finance for making improvements or expanding their business. Financial management is all about planning investment, funding the investment, monitoring expenses against budget and man managing gains from the investments. In nutshell, financial management means management of all matters related to an organizational finance. The best way to demonstrate the importance of good financial management is to describe some of the tasks that, that it involves. So here are uh, these tasks. So first one is financial planning and successful promotion of an enterprise acquisition of funds as and when required at the minimum possible cost, proper use and allocation of funds, then balancing cash outflow with cash inflow. So there must be proper balance between uh, cash um, coming in the organization and cash going out of the organization. Then ensuring that there is a sufficient level of short term working capital so that there is no interruption in the working of the uh, business, then taking sound financial decisions. Seventh one is improving the profitability through financial controls, increasing the wealth of the investors and ultimately the nation, then promoting and mobilizing individual and corporate savings. Tenth one is tax planning that will minimize the taxes a business has to pay. So, all these tasks related to finance are done by management and are very important for the business enterprises. So let us understand this better by taking an example of a company uh, named as Cotton Textile Limited. The company earns money by selling textiles. Let us assume that it earns rupees 10 lakh every month. This is known as revenue. So these 10 lakhs which uh, are which is earned by the business, they are the revenue of the business. A company has many expenses. Some of the major expenses of the company is like wages to workers, raw material for making the textile, electricity and water bills, and purchase and repair of machine that used to manufacture the textile. All these expenses are paid out of the revenues, revenues of the company. If the revenues are more than the expenses then the company will make profit but if the expenses are more than revenues then it will face losses if it continues like that eventually it will lose all its assets in other words it will lose it will lose its property and all that it owns in that case even the workers may be asked to leave the company so to avoid this situation, the company has to manage the cash inflows. Cash inflow is what coming uh, into the company, the cash coming into the company and outflow. Outflow means the various expenses that the company has to meet. So the company has to manage their cash inflows and cash outflow. Next is the scope of financial management. The scope of financial management has undergone changes over the years. Until the middle of this century, its scope was limited to procurement of funds under major events in the life of enterprise such as promotion, expansion, mergers, etc. But in the modern times, the financial management includes beside the procurement of funds, the three different kinds of financial decisions and they are the investment decisions, financing decisions and the dividend decisions. Dear students, although all these things or all uh, these three decisions we had covered or somehow touched in the previous slides, but now we will see it again or have a recap of the previous points under new heading and that is scope of financial management. So first we will talk about the investment decision. The investment decisions can be classified under two broad groups. 
long term investment decisions and short term investment decision the long term investment decision is referred to as the capital budgeting and the short term investment decision as working capital management when we talk about the capital budgeting it is the process of making investment decisions in capital expenditure a capital budgeting decision involves the decision of allocation of capital or commitment of funds or utilization of funds to long term assets that would generate income in future two important aspects of long term investment decisions are the evaluation of the prospective profitability of a new investment and the measurement of a cut off rate against that the prospective return of new investment could be compared all this is very well known that future benefits of investments are difficult to measure and cannot be predicted with certainty also risk in investment arises because of uncertain returns so considering these two factors investment proposals should therefore be evaluated in terms of both expected return and risk then comes the short term investment decisions short term investment decisions on the other hand relates to the allocation of funds as among cash and equivalents receivables and inventories such a decision is influenced by trade off between liquidity and profitability the reason is that the more liquid the assets the less it is likely to yield and the more profitable an asset the more illiquid it is a sound short term investment decision or working capital management policy is one which ensures high prof higher profitability proper liquidity and sound structural health of the organization then comes the financing decision once the firm has taken the investment decisions and committed itself to new investment it must decide the best means of financing these commitments the firms have to decide when where from and how to acquire funds or obtain funds to meet the firm's investment needs the main issue before the firm is to determine the appropriate mix of equity and debt the mix of debt and equity is known as the firm's capital structure the financial management must strive to obtain the best financing mix or the optimum capital structure for the firm the firm's capital structure is considered optimum when the market value of share is maximized so when the market value of shares of the company is maximized that is is the optimum capital structure in the absence of debt or in the absence of uh, uh, debentures loan the shareholder return is equal to the firm's return the use of debt affects the return and risk of shareholders it may increase the return uh, on equity funds but it always increase risk as well the change in shareholders return caused by the change in the profit is called the financial leverage a proper balance will have to struck between return and risk when shareholders return is maximized maximized with given risk the market value per share will be maximized and firm's capital structure would be considered optimum once the financial manager is able to determine the best combination of debt and equity he or she must raise the appropriate amount through the best available sources now the next financial decision is the dividend decision the financial manager must decide whether the firm should distribute all profits or retain them or distribute a profit and retain the balance the proportion of profit distributed as dividend is called the dividend payout ratio and the retained proportion of profit is known as the retention ratio the optimum dividend policy is one that maximizes the market value of the firm's shares dividends are generally paid in cash but a firm may issue bonus shares so bonus dividend can also be paid in terms of bonus shares bonus shares are shares issued to the existing shareholders without any charge so companies when they issue bonus share they uh, prefer to offer the bonus share to their existing shareholders 
so when uh, companies they issue bonus share they offer these bonus shares in the form of dividend to their existing shareholders so next we will see now the interrelation of financial decision all these three types of decisions like financial decision investment decision and dividend decision they are interrelated the first two uh, relate to any kind of organization while the thirds relate only to the profit making organization thus it can be seen that financial management is very important at every level of business activity from a sole trader to the largest multinational corporation also the most importantly the underlying objective of all these decision is the same that is the maximization of shareholders wealth so the maximization of shareholder wealth this is the objective this is the important this is the main objective of the uh, financial management so these all these decisions influence one another and are interdependent now we'll have a, a quick recap uh, what we have done so far so we studied that financial management is that managerial activity which is concerned with planning and controlling of the firm's financial uh, resources the two business aspects or two business component which uh, we have discussed uh, is uh, uh, which we have discussed are the procurement of funds and utilization of funds how company procure the funds obtain the funds from the different sources and how companies effectively utilize the funds so they so that they get the maximum returns and they maximize the shareholders wealth then uh, different task performed by the financial management which actually demonstrate its importance in the modern times the financial management includes beside procurement of funds the three different kinds of decisions as well and these decisions uh, are the investment decisions financing decisions and dividend decisions which we have discussed in detail in this session so students this is all about this session in the next session will cover the objectives of financial management that is actually very important to know and understand so till the next session bye and happy learning mm -hmm.